Hi, friend. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is a really exciting one. I have a fabulous yoga teacher that I will be interviewing, and I can't wait to introduce you to her. Allison Russell is a yoga teacher, a yoga teacher trainer, and a yoga teacher consultant. Holy moly, she does it all, and she does it fabulously. She is she has 200 hour and 300 hour yoga teacher trainings in North Dakota, South Dakota and Colorado. My goodness. And recently she has decided to consult with yoga teachers on how to start your own conference. This is huge. Oh my gosh, I can't wait for her to just dive right in. So Allison, thank you so much for being here. Thanks Amanda. I'm so excited to be here with everyone. So tell us a little bit about your yoga journey and what led you to teaching yoga, going to yoga teacher training, all the good stuff. Well, it's kind of interesting because I actually did not want to be a yoga teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little different path than a lot of other people, but I initially wanted to teach step aerobics. And this was back whenever I was in college, I was about 20 and I really wanted to teach step aerobics. So I got certified and I interviewed and they came back to me and they said, well, we want to hire you for step aerobics, but you also, we also really need a yoga teacher. So we can only hire you if you can also teach yoga. And I said, done, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I had never even taken a yoga class. I had no idea what to expect, but I basically just started teaching yoga from there. And, um, but I found that I really just fell in love with the yoga. I, ended up, you know, really actually healing my body a lot more uh, from the yoga. I started dealing with my stress better too. I, I didn't even realize that I was stressed, but I found myself telling my friends around finals week, like, just breathe. It's going to be okay. And I was like, oh my gosh, this yoga thing, there's something to it. So I really decided to pursue that. And now I've taken all my teacher trainings, my 200 and my 500, and I'm in a yoga therapy program because I just really believe in, in the healing power of yoga. I think it's so important for everyone. Oh, that's so good. I love the journey that you've taken and you just kind of let it take you, you know, you let, and now look where you are. You have so much training and so much knowledge. You've been doing this for a really long time. And then the natural progression is okay. You graduate yoga teacher training. You start jumping into studio jobs and teaching, 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 right? I'm assuming that that's what you did. And then I would love to know how you decided, because I talk about this with my audience all the time is teaching yoga and earning money outside of a yoga studio, not necessarily taking it away completely, still teaching in studios, but doing some other, other things to bring in revenue to the business. So I would love to hear that story. So that's actually been a kind of interesting story. Um, I was teaching in a studio. I was, I was doing a lot of stuff, um, teaching all the time, like you said, mm -hmm. and we actually moved. And that was the big catalyst for this change. Um, we moved from Austin, Texas up to Williston, North Dakota, a pretty small town. And there was actually nowhere to teach yoga. Oh. They didn't have anything there. And so I basically started teaching in my garage, $5 a class, mm -hmm. and it, my garage started to fill up, which was wow. pretty crazy. Um, and so then a big, well, from there, uh, I started teaching in my garage. We started teaching at other businesses. I started teaching at the college and that really opened my eyes to teaching outside of the studio. And I realized that there was an opportunity to make a lot more money. Um, and so I did that for the two years we were there. And whenever I left North Dakota, cause now I live in Colorado, I, all my students were like, what, what are we going to do? Like, who's going to teach us yoga now? So I told them, well, I can train you guys. You have to be the oh. yoga. And it was such a great progression because now they're able to build their businesses. We've done multiple yoga teacher trainings up there in North Dakota, Montana, and South Dakota. And we're really, I'm really passionate about now helping those yoga teachers start and run their studios. Um, and they're running their own teacher trainings. So, you know, about five years ago, over on the Western side of North Dakota, there was three to five yoga teachers. And now there's probably over 75. Um, oh my so gosh. 
expression. Mm -hmm. That is such a testament to coming all the way from step aerobics, all the way to now you're teaching yoga teachers and they're impacting all of North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, all of this. What a beautiful story that is. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, you know, within that, I didn't even realize, but I really niched down within there. I didn't even realize what I was doing. I was just kind <laughs> of doing it. I feel like so many times as yoga teachers were like, oh, to really make it in the yoga world, you have to try and reach everyone. And I want to be, I want to be a yoga teacher in Colorado so I can really be within those top yogis. But there's people all over the country in smaller areas that are also mm -hmm. looking for yoga and they're hungry mm -hmm. for it. And so by really niching down just on my location up there, it was able to make an even bigger impact than trying to break into this more saturated yoga scene here in Colorado. So it really, really helped. So good. Like my marketing heart is so happy hearing this. Like everyone watching, she said it. I didn't even have to say it this time. I'm always talking about narrow down, get, get more specific. You'll really, it becomes easier to impact more people. Yes. Just because the words become easier. All of it just becomes, it's almost like it falls in your lap because yes. people are like, yes, you're doing what I want you to do. Like you just opened your garage. That was how simple it was. You opened your garage and charged people $5 a class. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank Absolutely. you. Yeah. It feels kind of surreal, but yeah, that's how it got started. Let's talk about your conference. So you started a conference. So give me a little bit of insight onto that, how you went from yoga teacher trainings, which I'm assuming you still run. And then you also started a conference. So it all just happened. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I was teaching the yoga teacher trainings and my yoga teachers were kind of like, well, how do we get CEUs? Where can we go and get more education? What about workshops? And this was the first round of teachers. And I was like, I don't know. The, the nearest <laughs> option for you guys is like 12 hours away. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's not very realistic. I mean, that's days off of work. That's a lot of right. money. That's travel. So it just wasn't realistic. So it kind of just got me started on this idea of, well, why don't we do a conference here? I know other teachers in these other towns are also looking for these opportunities. Everyone needs more education. And right. instead of asking my students to drive across the state, why don't we just do something in the middle and have everyone come together and just make it this big three-day event? And that's how the conference was really born. Um, wow. Yeah, it was, it was kind of crazy. I, I told my students at the time, I was like, so I have this crazy idea that we could <laughs> just do a conference. And they were like, yes. yes. <laughs> I was like, okay, well now I've committed. I don't know. I don't right. know. <laughs> said it out loud. Now it has to happen. Oh, yep. that's great. That's great. But you had immediate buy-in, which is great. So that's part of the process that like you did everything right. And you know, you, you said it, you tested the waters a little bit, you got some interest and lo and behold, the conference was successful. So people showed up for the conference. <laughs> people showed up. That's incredible. Yeah. So talk to me before we jump into how now you help other yoga teachers do this. Share with me a little bit about how you marketed your conference. The first thing that I really want people to, to understand is the value of word of mouth. Mm -hmm. I, I just can't even explain enough about how your own personal network is so important because really I just, I initially started by telling my own teachers about it. And then I started to communicate with every single studio in North Dakota. I found them on Instagram and Facebook. I sent them emails. I made phone calls. I sent flyers. I just tried to get the word out. And a lot of, a lot of energy was generated simply from people sharing with each other. Um, awesome. so that word of mouth is just so important, especially mm -hmm. your own personal network is just really, really powerful. So that was the first big step. Um, my second step, which, I mean, we all know this, it's social media. Yeah. Social media has such an amazing power because again, it was me 
tagging studios, talking to studios. It was me asking teachers to present and having them share information with their students and studios. I ran the Facebook ads, which were really, really well received. Social media is just really, really powerful and it's cheap. It requires some yeah. time and it requires some energy, but it's just like word of mouth. It's very, very, very effective. Mm -hmm. So those were my two biggest strategies that I used. And especially for that very first year, we ran it on a shoestring budget. Mm -hmm. um, there was me and two other women who started the conference and we each contributed $500 to start. Oh, and wow. We made it That's so, incredible. So then you take it from... Okay, you are a yoga teacher and then you teach yoga teachers and then you teach yoga teachers even more at a conference and now, oh my gosh, you're branching into helping other yoga teachers start conferences. Yep. My, my passion is community and I just want all yoga teachers to be able to create their own communities. I'm so passionate about yoga that I think it's important that yoga teachers understand that there's, there's also other ways to make money besides just teaching in a studio and conferences are a way that we can do this. Um, it's a way that you can also just create a really big impact um, within your community. You can also be seen as a leader within your community. Mm -hmm. And teachers are looking for that. And they're in the daily hustle of always trying to do more, more, more. And what if you did less, but you did something bigger? That can create a huge impact. And so I want teachers to realize that potential and I want to help empower them to see that they have the ability to do this. So I offer consulting for yoga teachers who want to make that really big impact in their community and be seen as a leader in their community. And I do one-on-one -on -one consulting where we can just do like an hour long session and especially to just brainstorm maybe. Mm -hmm. But if you're starting a new conference, it's important to have someone on your team. I did this with two other women. So I think it's important to have someone with you. So I also do half day and full day um, brainstorming sessions or VIP sessions mm -hmm. basically. So we can really start working from the bottom up and we can give you a really strategic layout for what needs to be accomplished when. So you leave there with action steps and a marketing plan and you just feel really empowered and ready to go. That's incredible. And I think there's so many ideas, so many ideas that you could, any yoga teacher. So let's say a yoga teacher, there's really two avenues that they could take in my opinion of just doing a little brainstorming here is like there could be a yoga conference that is for yoga teachers where they are getting those continuing education credits and uh, you know spending time in community with other yoga teachers or there's more of the yoga festival yoga where yoga is happening asana is happening to a broader audience in the community and there's two different ways but you could help with either one of those Yes. Even just small events. You can do a small yoga day event in your community where it's just a mini yoga festival within your own town. Um, something like that can really make you be seen as a leader, but you need to know where to start. So I can help with all that variety. It's so helpful, like you said, to have someone alongside you. I mean, there's just something you hit the nail on the head with focusing on community, no matter what that is, like the community of, hey, we just need someone to brainstorm with, or I want you to help me implement my event. There's so many different levels, but having someone help with planning an event is just so incredibly helpful. I'm so thankful that you are willing to share all of these marketing tips and, and all of this insight with my audience as well. Thank you. <laughs> You're doing great. You're following your calling, following your passion. And that is what, that's why it's working. You know, you are um, just the, you're doing all the things. You're just following your heart, which is what yoga teachers do in such a great way. But you have done it in a way that is, you're creating a sustainable business for yourself, mm -hmm. which is yep. what, what I 
preach all the time. I'm like, okay, yes, you're a yoga teacher, but you are an entrepreneur. You are a business owner. So let's start thinking like one. And it doesn't have to mean the big, bad, scary wolf of corporate America. It just means you think like a business owner and you make smart business decisions. And therefore you can earn an, a living and actually go on vacation. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. And not have to be penalized for getting your classes subbed or right. anything. It's, it's been a journey. So the last question I have for you, I always like to ask, uh, when I talk with experienced yoga teachers like yourself that have come so far, and especially the ones that are making, earning a living outside of the studio, please share your, the tips that you, that took you from graduating yoga teacher training and teaching in a studio to where you are today in terms of, did you market yourself in a specific way or did you shift a mindset in a certain way? Any of that is really helpful. That's such a great question. And there's definitely been a lot of mindset shifts. The mindset is so important, but I would say for me, more than anything, what's really helped me is following my passion and listening to that inside voice, that inner voice that's telling me, Allison, you can do more. Or that initial idea of, Allison, you should just start training teachers. And being scared for a moment, sitting with it, and then believing in myself and listening and saying and hearing, hearing the answer, the universe's answer of like, yes, you can do this. And I feel like sometimes when we take that first step, everything else lines up. And it's incredibly scary to take that very first step. But when you're really on your true path, when you are really living your purpose, things will line up for you. And it's just about trust. It's about listening and trusting. We all have so much power within us that we can, each one of us can do so many great things. We just have to listen and trust ourselves. Oh, That's probably my perfect. biggest tip. <laughs> Perfect. It's a great tip. And I love it so much. I'm just going to leave it right there. Let it simmer. And so please tell us, tell us all where we can find you, how we can work with you, all of the good things, because I will make sure to have all of the links in the blog so we can follow you and get on your email list and all of those things. Awesome. Well, please visit my website. It's allisonrissell.com. And on there, I actually have a whole huge list of all the conferences that I've been able to find in the US and Canada. And so I really recommend everyone go there. Conferences are a really great way just to bring energy, find new teaching ideas. It's a great way to just become inspired and motivated. So I really suggest that you go there, download that. I can't wait to download that list of conferences. Awesome. Cannot wait. That's so good. Such yeah. a good resource. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for being here today, Allison. And everyone watching, please make sure to go check out Allison and support her. Show her some love. And if you're thinking about starting a yoga conference, please reach out to her. She would be the perfect person to reach out to and get a consultation on the books because she can help you launch a conference in your local area and you just never know where that could take you. Listen to her advice, think outside the studio, really thinking about the ways in which she started to earn money outside of the yoga studio so that she can create a sustainable business for her. Until next time, see you later.